Hey everyone, this is Renee from iMore.com and we are talking to Paul Haddad from Catbot. How are you? I'm alright. How about yourself? Excellent. Uh, we had the big keynote today, yeah. iOS 6. Exciting day. Lots uh, so, of uh, new stuff. So, you, of course, Catbot, famous for Tweetbot, most lately, most recently. Um, Twitter integration they did last year, this year it was Facebook integration. A, was there anything really specific that you saw that would be beneficial for Twitter clients? Um, no, I mean, the, they, from what I could see, they didn't seem to upgrade the, the API much you know, on the Twitter side. They definitely integrated Twitter more with the OS yeah. than you know, pretty much anything else. They, all, you know, it's like 12 different times they mentioned Twitter during the, the keynote. It kind of got ridiculous. Uh, after a while, so it's, but, you know, it's great for us, you know, for any Twitter client like uh, developer, because they can, you know, they're just going to bring a ton more users into the network. It was horrible at first because you, you kind of you had a really nice authentication scheme and Twitter kind of took it away from you, you right. direct messages, and then iOS kind of gave it back to you even better. Yeah, to some point, but <laughs> yeah. no direct messages still, well, under some circumstances yeah. you get direct messages, <laughs> but it's definitely, you know, it really works well. We, you know, it's really nice to be able to just, you know, launch the app and, you know, click an OK instead of having that go in and launch a web page and type yeah. in all your uh, user account information, which I never remember anymore. So, um, you know, that is great. I'm glad yeah. they, uh, they work with uh, Twitter. And to do that. It was one thing I was hoping that they would, last year with Notification Center, they fixed all the problems with modal dialogues and notifications. Yeah. But they, they haven't fixed that with permissions yet. So if I install any yeah. Twitter client for the first time, do I have permission to use your Twitter? Do I have permission to use your location? Do I have permission right. to use it's three or four that you've got to just start yeah. tapping through? It, it's, well, and then you got to push notifications yeah. and what else? Yeah, location. And eventually maybe contacts depending on whose app you're using. Right, right. And you know, is there going to be a separate one for access to your image library? Yeah. Because that, you know. It depends on if you use the image picker versus the photo, but you might get the location pop up of the images again. Right. So it's, it's getting pretty silly, especially, uh, you know, I'm guessing that something's going to happen with contacts at some yeah. point. Yeah. You know, I think it already did with uh, Mac OS at, you know, at some point. Right? I think well, they, they had the privacy issue they agreed, up. yeah. <laughs> but I think there's actual a notification that shows up on there, so I've got to imagine that's going to get forwarded back. It's too much at some point. You know, we've actually, you know, we try very hard to keep those to a minimum, so, you know, we don't turn on push notifications by default, mostly because we don't want that to show up the very first time we launch. The Twitter account thing can't be held. Yes, because it doesn't really app. do anything <laughs> other than that, but the other ones we try to delay as much as possible because they're not getting that right now. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see because uh, for users, not enough is bad because then they have no control over their privacy, but too much and you just start hitting buttons, you don't even feed right. anymore. So. Right. Yeah, it's gotta, there's got to be some kind of leeway on there. And for me, I want to be able to control what to allow and what not yeah. to, but I just want to be able to do it once. When the app is launched, and some apps I don't want to get push notifications from. Absolutely. And if I'm launching a game, the last thing I want is to be you know, pestered by some, you know, one of the developers trying to sell, you know, IAP. Uh, yeah. You bought junk. your Smurf berries today. Right. <laughs> so I, you know, I hardly ever turn on push notifications for anything unless you know I know specifically that that's needed. But for like location, I don't mind them having access to that. So. Yeah. You know, I want to be able to control that and still not get pestered from Apple side or by 20 different application models. It is interesting because the iPhone is really, you can see Apple going from the Apple II to the Mac to iOS, democratizing computing, and now people who aren't computer savvy are using these devices voraciously, but we haven't made the, the permissions as user-friendly as we've made to actually use the device. When my mom sees these things, she calls me, she has no idea whether she's going to or not, and she starts to feel the same thing she feels with a big computer, that it's not accessible, it's intimidating, it's off-putting. Yeah, and like my kids, when they're running uh, on their, we got an iMac that we let them run, whenever they, they see one of those pop-ups, they come running, say, you know, should we accept this or should we deny this? So I could, you know, I haven't seen them do that too much on the iOS side, but you know, it's definitely an issue. You can't make it too complicated, but you can't make it too simple either. So unless you uh, do global settings, they never allow any application. 
motivated them to do this or ask me, which might work as well. Or eventually maybe there'll be a privacy center, like a notification center, you can just go on it. Yeah. You can do this. Any app can do this, but if you want to do this, ask me. Ask me yeah. And no app can do this. So they, they certainly could do it. I mean, uh, they could do it without really impacting any applications because, you know, you, you just ask for permission, you know, the U.S. decides whether to give it to you or not. You, have no say in that, so if Absolutely. you turn it off, it could easily just say, you know, the OS didn't give permission, or the user didn't give permission to this. Go on. What about your business? Speaking of which, the OS seems to have gotten a sweet mode now, so. Yeah. You, you, I just want to say first up front, you have the best notification system on Thank iOS you. that I've experienced. And part of the reason is that I can turn it off at night, right. so that I don't get woken up by a thousand chirps in the middle of the night. But now iOS is going to do it. But it's it's not as granular as yours. Right. But it seems like there is an advantage to having the OS handle that oh, instead of yeah. There's definitely an advantage. I'd much rather have them do it because there's a lot of you know, backend stuff that needs to happen to yeah. support stuff. Especially like if you move from one city to another, we need to know that you move different time zones in order to change your seat settings so they match whatever new time zone you're in. Yeah. You know, we're doing all this in one server somewhere sending those notifications out. We need to know where each device is and which time zone they're in to do that. So I'd rather, much rather not have any of that code in place and let Apple do it. But it looked like it was just a simple on-off yes. toggle. Which, like airplane mode for sleep. Right. <laughs> which I'll never use. Yes. And I'm just, you know, if it's not automated, I'll just always leave it on and, you know, use my own in-app settings for that. Which is bad for a user because then you have those settings but another app doesn't. It's much better if I have a consistent way to control that across all my apps. And it's also bad for us because, you know, they, they'll they start saying, oh, we're not getting any notifications. Yes. Well, why is that? Is it because they're not getting sent out or is it because you turned off the toggle at some point and forgot to leave it off? So, yeah, it creates a lot of You already have to deal with you, with Twitter, with iOS, and now you have to deal with what they've actually the device itself, but it's you know, a start, right? yeah. it's, it's something, and it looks like it's a lot more granular on the phone side of things, which is good, so it'll be interesting to see, you know, it's still not a recent version, yeah. so there's always time to change that on their end of it. Was there anything non-Twitter related that you saw today that particularly interested you? On the OS side... resisted doing the whole post to Facebook stuff for various reasons. One being we didn't want to have to log in to, yes. to Facebook. Um, you know, might look at, you know, does it now make sense to somehow have a discrete toggle in there to post to Facebook as well, since it's, you know, a lot less you know, set up for the user. They can just go and, and push in their... Um, the other one, you know, they're, they're talking a bit more about uh, reading lists and yeah. how they're expanding that. It'll be interesting to see if they actually open up an API for it. I haven't actually gone through and looked at the SDK, and if I did, I could talk about it. But uh, that would be nice to, to have in there. Yes. Uh, not that the paper and pocket are bad choices, but to be able to just launch the app and have that ready to go and click without having to log in anywhere. It's Quote unquote for free. Yeah. 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 And it's, you know, you can't beat that. Yeah. The, the whole, you know, I hate seeing logins and I try to avoid those yeah. as, as much as possible because I never remember a password. <laughs> Absolutely. So, it and you end up just not putting them on. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with me, I, I'm installing it or uninstalling and reinstalling yes. all the time. And, you know, again, that's one of the great things about having the whole Twitter single sign on stuff at the OS level. You can set up your accounts once and for the most part, they just work after. There was no big iCloud section. Last year's keynote, yeah. the whole iCloud section. This time we saw you can, you can share photo stream. And I, I, you have the iPad app now and you have the iPhone app. Right. Um, do they work close enough together for your liking, or would you prefer that there was a better way to tie stuff together in the US? I, no, I think the APIs for iCloud are great. They, they, when they work, they you know they work as I would expect them to. Uh, the problem is they don't work sometimes yeah. for mysterious reasons that we can't figure out. So I'm really hoping that at some point 
or you know, as part of the iOS 6, they're working on really making the the low level stuff work as opposed to just adding new features. So if they're doing that, I'm, I'm happy with the API as is. You know, there's not there's not too much more that that we need to do that um, to do there for that integration. We kind of talk a little bit about like pushing graphs across yeah. the cloud, but it, that gets really complicated with like big images. And oh sure, such. yeah. Uh, so we haven't quite gone into that direction yet, but we're, you know, what we're doing with syncing position and syncing mute filters, it works really well. When when it works. And thank you for those new filters, by the way. Yeah, we've been kind of, you know, putting a lot more effort into that. Kinda, the regex keyword new filters <laughs> is absolute genius. Yeah, yeah, and I figured a lot of people would, would like that one. Well, I don't want to share them as well, which is uh, nice for people. Absolutely. So, you know, the regex stuff sports teams. is just very hard to uh, to get right. Yes. So uh, I have more of a problem with getting it right. I'm, I'm always trying half a dozen permutations before I get it right. So. That's, you know, that's kind of why I put that whole sharing thing in there, so somebody can get it. for you. <laughs> yeah, somebody can get it right, and they can go and post it for everybody else to, to look at and play with. So, uh, I guess the last question, what's what's in the future for TabBots? Are you going to be working on TweetBot still? Do you have other stuff in the yeah, work? Yeah, we're still working on TweetBot. Uh, we plan to you know, keep updating it as, as much as possible. we got one other project on the way that I'm not going to talk about today. Or, um, but you're not done. No, <laughs> no. And then uh, probably later this year we'll start something totally different. But, uh, I have no idea what. Is it, it must be nice because you have so many apps. It's always a change of pace. You're not stuck in one. Yeah, yeah. We we'll definitely like being able to switch gears every every once in a while. But uh, Tweetbot's been doing so great that we're kind of pushing with it. And it's something you use. I mean, I, I spend half my day right? in yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's definitely the app I use the most by far, even more than now. Yeah. On, uh, on the iPhone, so. And Safari, I think. So, you know, we use it, we love it, so we keep going with it as much as possible. This is Renee from MyBoy.com. We're talking about Paul Haddad, Tapbot, makers of Tweetbot, amongst many other awesome little bots. Uh, for more, uh, check out Tapbot.com. Tapbots.com. Let us check out Tapbots.com. Uh, and check out iMore.com. And for more videos, check out YouTube.com slash iMoreVideo. Is that okay?